Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. In response to the increasing number of local coronavirus cases, plus the first reported deaths in Guilford County, Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn issued a stay-at-home order for Greensboro residents. The order remains in effect through Thursday, April 16th. The goal is to reduce exposure and flatten the curve to reduce community spread and hospital admissions. Residents are asking what are they allowed to do under the order and if a permission slip is needed to leave home. Residents do not need a permission slip or any other document to drive around the city. There are no checkpoints and there is no curfew. Residents are free to travel to essential services or destinations such as going to work, grocery stores, pharmacies, healthcare appointments and outdoor exercise, all while using proper social distancing. Restaurants are still open, but can only offer takeout and delivery service. If you aren't doing these activities, we need you to stay home. The city's public safety operations continue as normal, along with trash, recycling and water service. Many non-essential city employees are working from home. For frequently asked questions about the stay home order, latest news, cancellations, and city service changes, visit the city's COVID-19 webpage. The city of Greensboro is temporarily waiving yard waste fees at the White Street landfill. This applies to residents arriving in cars, vans, passenger vans, pickup trucks, and non-dumping trailers. Please note, regular yard waste fees of $40 per ton still apply for dump trucks and dump trailers. Here's what to expect when bringing yard waste to the White Street landfill located at 2503 White Street. Upon arrival, proceed to the open scale, drive to the window and speak to the clerk through the microphone to provide your home address. Follow the yard waste signs and turn right into the yard waste and compost area. A city attendant will direct you to an unloading zone. All loads must be unloaded by residents. The White Street landfill hours are Monday through Friday from 7.50 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. The city suspended all residential curbside yard waste collection on March 30th due to COVID-19. Residents should not place yard waste at the curb during this suspension. This suspension allows staff to focus its resources on garbage and recycling collection, which will continue without interruption to maintain public and employee health and safety. For more information, call the White Street Landfill at 336-373-7658. The NC Works Career Centers in Greensboro and High Point are providing text messaging support as an added service to the community. The NC Works Career Centers will continue supporting customers by phone. However, this text option is a way for staff to quickly answer general and instructional questions regarding job postings, job searches, and unemployment insurance benefits. NC Works Career Center staff will be available to respond to text inquiries from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. Businesses with immediate hiring needs may text the word HIRE to 336-297-9444. Job seekers in need of employment opportunities may text the word JOBS to 336-882-4141. And for questions about unemployment insurance benefits, text UI to 336-882-4141. The purpose is to create innovative ways for businesses and residents to access resources and services during the pandemic. This gives businesses a mechanism to post employment opportunities and job seekers a convenient way to access them. For more information about posting a job or available job opportunities, visit the Guilford Works website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. One in four Americans suffer from allergies. Don't let the things that contribute to your symptoms stop you from enjoying your activities. I am Dr. Rosalind Hicks, an allergist from Allergy and Asthma Center of North Carolina, a member of Cone Health Medical Group. Let's get started and talk about allergies. Allergies are the common cold. Very similar entities, they both consist of a lot of congestion, runny nose, sneezing, 
Typically with the common cold, you're gonna have starting out a little more scratchy throat, sore throat, and you often a little bit of fever. Both can have cough because of the post nasal drip, and you're gonna feel a little lousy with the common cold, a little run down, uh, dehydrated, those kind of things. And then with allergies, it can be any time of year. Cold may be more common in the winter season, and allergies can be with exposure. Did you just mow the lawn? Did you just take care of the cat or dog? Did you just clean out the attic with lots of dust? So those are the things uh, we think about to differentiate between a common cold and allergies. The common triggers kind of fall into two categories, indoor, outdoor, seasonal or year round. So in the spring, we think a lot about tree pollen, we, followed by grass pollen and weed pollen. And then we have dust, mite, cockroach, mold, which can be indoors and out. And then any kind of furried animal, dog, cat, gerbil, any of those. So clearly if we're sensitive to the animals, then we shouldn't have animals, we shouldn't be exposed to them. But uh, we can't really control completely pollen exposure. So if you go outside, if you're doing something involving that exposure, then wearing a mask, if you have to mow the grass, wiping off your hands and feet, taking off your shoes before you walk through the house so you don't track the pollen through, minimizing the window being down as you ride down the road, and wiping off the cats and dogs when they come in from their walk so the pollen is not throughout the house and on the furniture, those kind of things. Well, of course, avoidance would be the biggest action that we could participate in to try to minimize symptoms, but side of that, uh, adding medications to minimize the congestion, sneezing, runny nose. I'm a huge proponent of saline rinse, and so that's something easy that's not medicated. It's just salt water flushing out and clearing out the nasal passages so we can take away those allergens that we've been breathing in. I think it is very important to prepare for allergy season so that you can minimize your suffering and you don't have so much congestion and headache or disrupted activity. I like to encourage people to start their medications around Valentine's Day and usually that'll minimize their symptoms and they can go into the allergy season ahead and symptom free. It is important for individuals to think about allergy testing if they're having lots of symptoms, uncontrolled symptoms, they've tried multiple medications, or they feel like there's something, one specific thing that they're really interested in knowing that they're allergic to. And especially if you have upper and lower airway symptoms, if you're coughing and wheezing, then that has become quite the standard for management to, to consider allergy injections and we need to know exactly what you're allergic to to be able to put in your specific vial so that we can manage you with the injections if we uh, have the positive testing available there. And in the situation where you may be food allergic, having allergy testing can be very informative to know what to avoid. Thank you for joining us. I hope all this information has been helpful to decrease your suffering from allergies. For more information, go to conehealth.com wellness. I'm Dr. Rosalyn Hicks. The stay-at-home order impacts everyone in Guilford County. With so many people, including kids, staying indoors, many people need to step outside and get some fresh air every so often. City parks and lakes and trails are still an option. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Greensboro Transit Agency has announced another change in bus service in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. GTA will continue to operate on an hourly schedule and move from 16 to a combined seven routes, usually offered on Sundays, plus routes 15, 17, and 12A. The Sunday service maps are listed online at RideGTA.com. Click on Routes, then GTA Sunday Routes. Those routes are numbered 21 through 27. Fares will remain free until further notice. The new service hours are Monday through Friday from 5.15 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., Saturday from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. This service schedule will remain in effect until further notice. The county and state stay-at-home orders have cut overall ridership by at least 50% during peak riding periods. 
Reducing the level of transit service allows the system to offer transportation services for employment, medical, and other essential needs while maintaining financial stewardship. Due to the nature of the SCAT paratransit system, its buses will operate normally, mirroring the service hours of GTA. SCAT iRide will continue to operate normally as well. Greensboro Parks and Recreation has made several operational changes in response to COVID-19. Residents can visit city park facilities and trails as long as they maintain a six-foot distance between individuals. All indoor facilities are closed. This includes the Parks and Recreation Administrative Headquarters and the Parks Operations Division facility. All playgrounds at city parks and recreational facilities are closed in compliance with the Guilford County Emergency Declaration. However, neighborhood parks remain open. Brant, Higgins, and Townsend Lakes, along with Barber, Country, Hester, and Keeley Parks are open daily from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., but the parks and lake offices are closed. Staff will monitor capacity and ensure water safety. Fishing is permitted, but the pier is limited to no more than 10 users at a time. There will be no bait sales or boat rentals. Private boats are allowed to launch on the lakes. Bryan Park and Gillespie Golf Course are open during regular hours, but rentals are limited to one golfer per cart. A limited number of people can enter the pro shops, and staff will clean golf carts after each use. Gillespie Grill is open 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. for takeout only. All city-owned cemeteries are open. Burial services will be scheduled from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and will be limited to no more than 10 participants. Plot sales and all other burial services normally conducted in person will be by appointment only. The latest city news and updates about COVID-19 and reviewing the emergency declaration and frequently asked questions are available on the city's website. The United Way of Greater Greensboro and the City of Greensboro are supporting residents impacted by the coronavirus by establishing the Greensboro Virus Relief Fund. To date, more than $580,000 has been collected. The Greensboro Virus Relief Fund donations support local children, families, and small businesses impacted by the virus. United Way and the City will coordinate with local nonprofits to determine ongoing needs and fund distribution. Areas of anticipated need include food, education, employment reductions, housing, medical, and resources for the small business community. To make a donation, either text the word virus to 40403 or visit unitedwaygso.org to make an online donation. Other efforts to collect donations are being coordinated by the Interactive Resource Center, which helps the homeless, and the Community Foundation of Greater Greensboro. Donations from the foundation will support local nonprofits that provide support to the community. In these trying times, everyone is trying to maintain a sense of normalcy. The Chamber of Commerce is no different. Coming up after the break, we'll talk about how the Chamber is providing daily support to the local business community. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The number of businesses that are either closed or operating on a limited basis has become the new norm as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. This has given the Chamber of Commerce a newfound purpose. Joining me now via Skype in the spirit of the stay-at-home order is Tracy Myers. She is the Executive Vice President of Member Engagement at the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. Hello, Tracy. Welcome to the show and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Carla. These are definitely interesting times. Um, thank you for letting us connect remotely. So tell me, in light of the pandemic, how, how has the Chamber of Commerce been able to help our local restaurants? Being a resource for our members and for our community in a time of crisis is one of the most important things that we do as your local Chamber of Commerce. A lot of things changed for us at the beginning of March. We had to quickly pivot from March Madness, and that initially started with supporting our local restaurants and businesses that were first impacted by the loss of the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament. We worked with Downtown Greensboro Incorporated, which were wonderful partners, to create a list of local restaurants across the Greensboro area that are open for takeout, have delivery services, 
and or offer gift cards um, so that we could share that with the community and drive support of local business. That's excellent, Tracy. I know that these restaurants and businesses are so appreciative of those efforts for your extra promotion of their business locations and what they're offering during this trying period. How is the Chamber helping all businesses, whether they are small or large, in the same vein? We began by calling each and every one of our over 1,300 members to personally check in and ask what needs they have. On March the 17th, we started a daily action call at 3 p.m. each weekday. We've had topics ranging from how to apply for the Small Business Administration loans, to managing a remote workforce, to coping skills. We've been looking to our members and asking them what their needs are and what questions they have. And we're using our connections and resources to provide the answers. Now, it's interesting that you mentioned the daily call, action calls. Is this just for members of the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce? No, these calls are open to anyone in the community. We recognize that these are topics that everyone needs right now, regardless of membership. If you visit our website at greensboro.org forward slash COVID-19, you can find the link to join our calls as well as audio and summary of each of the calls we've done so far. So if you're just now hearing about these, you're in luck and get the full benefit of going back and listening for the calls that meet your needs. Tracy, you've shared some really great examples of how the Greensboro Chamber is such a support mechanism right now for our business community. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? One last thing, if you're providing a specialized service during this time, let us know. We love the stories that are coming in from the community about how businesses are changing their operations or they're meeting these critical needs that they didn't meet um, previously or just finding innovative ways um, to change and, and to make a positive impact. This could be anything from food delivery services that you didn't offer previously to childcare for first responders. Send that information to Holly West at hwest at greensboro.org. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Tracy. I know this has been a really difficult time for not only our business community, but also the Chamber, and we appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you for Skyping in to let us know how the Chamber is supporting our small business community. Once the virus clears up, I hope you'll stop by and let us know all of the other great resources available through the Greensboro Chamber. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. I'll be glad to. Stay tuned for some useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The Greensboro City Council meetings are broadcast right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. City Council meetings take place on the Level 2 of Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Parks and Recreation Department has developed a series of virtual programs for the community to offset the recreation centers being closed. Alternate programs will include activities that can be safely conducted outdoors with appropriate social distancing. For the foreseeable future, staff will broadcast Facebook Live videos Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. The videos will focus on a variety of areas such as environmental education, fitness, and Start Smart sports drills. The library branches are closed, but there is a vast array of resources available virtually. North Carolina Digital Library offers access to an extensive collection of downloadable audiobooks, ebooks, and e videos. This is available 24 hours, 7 days a week. NC Kids is an online library just for kids. Guilford County School students can enter GCS in front of their student ID number to access online resources. BrainFuse provides homework help as well as assistance for veterans and job seekers. Last but not least, the library is using Facebook to share instructional videos and other programs offered by library staff. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, we have a special message from Mayor Nancy Vaughn regarding the coronavirus.
Hello, I'm Mayor Nancy Vaughn. I want to take a moment to talk about the coronavirus situation and what you can do to help during these difficult times. Regarding the recent stay-at-home order, I support Governor Cooper's leadership during this very difficult time. Not every county in North Carolina has been impacted by the spread of the coronavirus, and therefore it is very difficult to use a one-size-fits-all approach statewide. Over the next few days, you will continue to see cities and counties that are most impacted by the spread of this virus take a proactive approach to protect the residents of their respective communities. When the City Council and I were considering this decision, we relied on the advice of our medical community, especially our local Cone Health System. I have been appreciative of the counsel from CEO Terry Aiken and his medical staff. Terry has warned that with our current social distancing guidelines in place, we are at risk of exceeding our hospital capacity in the coming weeks. We must all advocate for the necessity of flattening the curve to reduce community spread and hospital admissions. What we are doing is acting before the crisis point hits. Our goals are to reduce the rate of transmission, to keep our community as healthy as possible, and to reduce the burden on our hospitals and healthcare workers. Additionally, the availability of our first responders, field operations, inspectors, water resources, and many other essential employees over a prolonged indefinite period is unsustainable. As we strive to serve our residents with the highest quality of service delivery, our employees, such as healthcare workers, are subject to quarantine. This is due to coronavirus exposure and fatigue resulting from prolonged shifts under stressful circumstances caused by unknown factors. Many people will be impacted by this order, and it is the most difficult decision I've made as your mayor. I know this affects many people's lives, families, businesses. And we appreciate the support and leadership of the Chamber of Commerce. Brent Christensen and his team has been a valuable resource to our local business community. I, along with the City Council, have a responsibility to protect our residents' health and safety. I believe this step is in the best interest of public health and will ultimately lead to a quicker reopening of businesses and hope for reestablishing normalcy. Stay at home is not a police state. It is not a shutdown of all functions. This is a direct appeal to parents or caregivers of high school and college age students. Many will see this as an extended spring break. This isn't. This is serious. This order prohibits people from unnecessary travel around the city. This is a stay at home order with limited exceptions. Dine in restaurants, bars, fitness centers, malls, movie theaters, yoga centers, hair salons, barber shops, nail salons, tanning centers are all closed. People are free to travel to essential services or to destinations, otherwise they need to stay home. Parks and greenways remain open. Exercise is encouraged. Remember to maintain social distance. Stay off public playground equipment. No groups larger than 10. Visit our website at www.greensboronc.gov for a complete list of activities. 
There will be people who say we have overstepped our authority and those who say we did not go far enough. There is no playbook and there is no do-over. History will judge us for the health and well-being of our community. I am willing to take this chance. Thank you for the emails. Thank you for the support of this decision. Frequently asked questions about the stay at home order are on our city's website. Remember, wash your hands, maintain social distance, not emotional distance, don't touch your face, facts, not fear. We will get through this together, but only together as we are Greensboro strong. Thank you. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. As a result of the government ban on large gatherings due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the status of a number of previously announced Tanger Center and Coliseum events have changed. Staff is working diligently to attempt to reschedule all of the postponed events. Ticket holders should hold on to their tickets until additional information is available regarding rescheduled dates. Previously purchased tickets for the original date will be honored at the rescheduled date. No exchange is necessary. For canceled events, tickets purchased on Ticketmaster.com will automatically be refunded to the original form of payment. All other tickets will be refunded at the point of purchase. For tickets purchased at the Greensboro Coliseum box office, please visit GreensboroColiseum.com. For updates on Tanger Center events, please visit TangerCenter.com. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to downtown Greensboro. The beat goes on for First Friday. April marked the first virtual event due to the pandemic. Remember to order takeout from your favorite downtown restaurant and shop online. Many of our downtown retailers are open for virtual business. For a list of restaurants, retailers, and upcoming events, visit firstfridaygreensboro.org. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. And now GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.